Mm-hmm. I had to drink on that one. <laughs> I thirst. Not everybody <laughs> welcome to the gym spot with myself miss trey that gym and dr hawk what it do hey <laughs> what it do baby all right y'all we are really excited about this show first of all we want to just speak blessings and peace over you all for uh the new coming year uh again kudos to you if you haven't gotten you some sort of vision board together to get your year started this is your time or the things that you have on your vision board. Make sure you are into trying to complete some of those things. What you think? I, I think that's so. We'll be talking more about the vision, uh, vision board at the beginning of the new year because mm -hmm. we'll probably do a little segment, yeah, section let's over do it. it. Yeah. I think it's very important that some people won't be able to participate in person, but I think it's every, every, every bit of care that everybody will be able to participate. Exactly, because uh, sometimes you want to cash the vision for the new year. And also, some of the things that you didn't really see manifest, don't worry. It's do it doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. It just means delayed, not denied. Okay? Correct. So, again, um, I hope you tune in to uh, the Diamond Cut on New Year's Eve. They're going to be kicking out an episode for you, Coco and Mr. Diamond Status. And also, um, if you haven't checked out the Christmas special uh, for the Diamond Cut, y'all make sure to check it out. Mother Steel, Deacon Evans coming through. And you know we're going to do a little something for you all day Christmas. Christmas morning, you're going to be able to hear some, you was able to hear some old school music by Deacon Evans while you opened your gifts. And then Mother Steel came to you about noon time, seeing if you're eating well, babe. And then you're going to be able to catch us at night where we talking some real life stuff. Uh, Mr. Diamond Status and Miss Trey that gym. What you got planned uh, for the new year? Uh, nothing really. Just sit at home. I know for Christmas, me and my family, we're going on a cruise. All right. Christmas, Christmas yes. cruise, y'all. So, again, y'all going to be catching this little, a couple of days after Christmas. So, yeah. Okay. Let's get on into this end of year wrap up. It's so many things that have been going on that we've been seeing. And y'all know us. We might go off the cuff and in the cuff. Okay. So first things first, I want to talk and deal with, before I go into spiritual, spirituality and religion, like we always go into that first, I want to get into the mental wellness situation. Mm -hmm. I think this year I am so proud. Everybody I talk to who have any issues, like, you know, when we were children, our parents really, truly talked to Jesus about it. You oh. know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, they they talked talk to Jesus. About, about everything. They didn't really, uh, you know, seek the help of professional counselors. Now you got people now, they want to sit down with grief counselors. They want to sit down with professional counselors. First of all, millennials and generation um, X, I got to give y'all y'all props where props is due. You're doing the dang on thing. You're sitting down, you're talking to licensed people, and you're allowing them to help you with your mentals. And that's, to me, kudos to you for that. Um, but I'm proud of that. Um, so I think in 2021, uh, it's, it has been that year of healing. Okay. A lot of people have been going on healing journeys. I don't know about you, but I have a lot of things that I didn't even think were triggers for me. Mm -hmm. I realized in 2021 were actually triggers for me. Okay. Um, and those things I've been talking to people about, and I've been really getting healing in those areas. Okay. So how can we as a community stay in this breakthrough? Uh, there are several ways that um, one I would like to suggest. I'm always buying self-help books okay. or, or personal healing journeys or just basically ways to stay healthy. Everybody think healthy or wealth or uh, wealthy is basically just being rich. Listen, you could be rich in the world, but if your health ain't there, you oh, just waste your money. The worst thing to do is have a lot of money and just not healthy. But to be wealthy just so that our soul, even our bodies, our mind, everything just has to be intact. So self-help books such as things like Louise Hay, mm. one of the books is You Can Heal Your Life. That book, I promise you, that's one I pick up all the time. It's just a great book. Another book by Yana Vinzet. Mm. She, all of her books are self-help books. Mm -hmm. um, they all provide affirmations. They're just amazing and excellent books. 
There's just so many resources out there that people can do, but always look in the areas of self-help. The other thing is, there are different people, like whenever you're ready, the student, whenever the student's ready, mm -hmm. the teacher will appear. Ooh. There are so... Wait a minute, repeat that one okay. more game. What the sages teach whenever the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Come on, sir. Great sages teach that one. Yes. So with that being stated, whenever you are on your journey of spiritual or self-realization, God will put somebody in place, whether it's a banner, whether it's a website, whether it's a, a I mean, something from TikTok. Just, just blow your mind and just get you on that path to where you need to go. But the key thing is, you have to be ready for that teacher to appear. So whenever you're ready, there are, there are always ways. The other thing is, a lot of people, as we've stated, are sitting there talking to licensed professionals yeah. and life coaches because a lot of people were embarrassed to basically go and sit to and uh, talk to particularly a white person, particularly because yeah. we always had this fear that white people going to turn us in and get us in trouble. Yeah. So now we have more licensed uh, African Americans. Now with all of that, we only have I think like 13 percent of African Americans that are licensed professional counselors within the whole country, yeah. which is very, very low, but it's still a different amount. And people are utilizing these uh, episodes and everything that we need for resources. So I think that's a very, very, very good start off for our African Americans. I think it is too. Um, one thing I have noticed, you know, uh, I remember working in the 90s, in the early 2000s, at the end of the 90s, in the early 2000s, and I remember we would talk at work and laugh and kiki, but I'm noticing when I talk at work now, it's all, it's about spirituality, it's about journey uh -huh. into your mental. Yes. And, you know, and I noticed that sometimes even those who don't feel comfortable with licensed counselors they're talking to you about certain things mm -hmm. if you pray it up now you can give them god's idea oh, yeah. on what it is uh god what god has to say oh yeah what it is and what he hearing for their lives and what he's seeing for their lives mm -hmm. and i think that that is uh commendable too that a lot of people are not at a place in their lives anymore where they just uh, what goes on in, in this house, staying in this house sort of thing. That's what we're talking We're more open mm -hmm. to being able to say, hey, I'm going through something or I'm, I'm hurting or, you know, or this don't feel right to me or I was triggered and really be able to get another person's perspective and be open to, you know, to another person's perspective as well on why. Because I remember I was talking to my counselor and they gave me a... They gave me somewhat of a, a perspective, but it really didn't hit home. Mm -hmm. I was talking to a young lady at work, and I said, you know what, I'm just, some get, you know, you gotta be led now. Yes. I was led to tell her what was going on, so I began to say, you know what, I was triggered. Instead of saying I got angry, I literally knew what it was. Yes. I was triggered by a moment that mm -hmm. happened to me. And I was telling her, I said, I just didn't get the right response. So I'm going to tell you, you let me know if I'm the issue or if I'm the problem, mm -hmm. baby. Because I'm okay. Some of y'all not okay with hearing that you the issue or the problem. But I'm okay with hearing I'm the issue or the problem because I want to fix it. I don't want to be walking around here dysfunctional mm -hmm. or in error. And I was explaining to them what it was. And they said, no, you're not the issue or the problem. This is why I build up to mm -hmm. that. And it was like so insightful because it was mm -hmm. like, oh, wow, dang, that's another perspective I didn't even think about. I think we need to talk more about triggers. What is a trigger to our listening audience? What, what would be you suggest from a uh, worldview? What would be a trigger? that can trigger things in the mind of the human psyche. So what I've learned about triggers is, if you've had any type of past traumas or undealt with issues, and you didn't even realize that these were things that was happening. For example, if you had a parent that really wasn't that present, and you didn't even realize how un not present they yes. were, until you talk to somebody else and they tell you, you know what, you had a good woman in your life, but you didn't have a good mother, baby. Mm -hmm. You That's understand what I'm saying? Oh it's, oh, it's a big difference. Okay. You can have somebody that provide and put a roof over your head, but if they're not a good mother where they're present, 
that can be the reason to why you have a lot of different mama issues, mm -hmm. men and women, but men that you don't like women for this X, Y, and Z, not even realize. Because I was talking to a gentleman mm -hmm. who came in that was a customer. Mm -hmm. People right. just feel the need to want to tell me their whole life story. And he was just sitting there and he didn't want to get up from my presence. I made him laugh, all of that. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden, he began to talk to me about his mother. Okay. And as he was talking, he said, but I had a good mama. I had a good mama. And I said, can I speak freely? Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah. I said, baby, you didn't have a good mother. You had a good woman in your life. Mm -hmm. I said, a good mother would have knew something was wrong because Those she facts. would be present. You sound like you had a woman that provided. And let me just be clear. It's times where women give a lot of yourselves as single mothers and single parents. That's why I take villages, you know. Mm -hmm. You have to have trusted people that are around that can help you in the midst of, I'm doing all this working, but I can't be present. But his particular mom, his mom liked to be on the boat and like to go out all uh -huh. the time. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't really that, you know, she was, uh, you know what I'm saying, she wasn't present. She wasn't present and you would beg her for her time or yes. attention. And I told him, do you realize you were actually begging her for her time and attention and okay. she didn't even notice what was going on? It's something else I'm glad you actually brought that out because now that we're dealing with a lot of our teenagers and our children have traumatic experiences due to triggers that they are not aware of. For example, I'm noticing a lot of parents don't give their kids hugs. They don't say, I love you. Oh. They don't They don't come up to the school, but they'll be like, you better not act like a fool because I just brought you them new joints. I just brought you a whole new outfit for your birthday. No hug, no I love you. You're going to be okay. I have faith in you. Mm -hmm. You can do this, you can do that. None of that. Mm -hmm. All it is, I work all day and that's all I can do for you is just buy you stuff and just show you the fruits of my labor. Yeah. So therefore, when your son or your daughter get to school, for example, the daughter, the first thing she'll be like, I'm ugly. Yeah, yeah. Because validation of your looks come from home. I don't care if you're fat, ugly, skinny, blue, pink, purple, gay, brown. Listen, yeah. I don't care what it is. Yeah. Your validation should be set up at home. Yeah. So I have a whole lot of girls. Mm. Okay? And I sit them together in a group. And the first thing I ask them, what is it to where y'all don't like each other? That's good. Story. And nobody could tell me why. All they know, I don't like her. She don't like me. She don't like her. And I mean, it's just a group of five girls, and they can't stand each other. They fight all day. I mean, they always got something to say. They talk to each other. And I just put them together. And I said, the only thing I can come up with is your self esteem is low yeah, because know. nobody validated you. That's it. You mad at this girl because she keep her hair fixed all the time. You mad at this girl because she had naturally curly hair who actually hates that her hair is naturally curly come and it's not straight like somebody. everybody else. I'm telling you, you mad at this girl because you are tall mm -hmm. and she's short and fat. Yeah. The bottom line was the end result was when I actually unveiled that to them that they really was insecure. They start to really think about themselves. Maybe you're right. I don't like her because wow. she has a pretty voice and everybody like her. She's smart and I'm not as smart. That don't mean you're dumb. You just have to work harder. That's just it. because you, one girl has curly hair and the other has straight hair. Baby, listen, we're the way God created us to be. Yeah. I don't have time to be jealous of you. You don't need to be sitting up here jealous and hating on me. God gives everybody their own level of grace. I'm going to that right there. Yes. And that's something that, you know, I, I, like you said, I've learned by talking to people. I'm helping them with self-worth. Self-worth. Self and sometimes what you are bold enough and brave enough to do, because I think it takes bravery to be able to talk to somebody and them tell you about you. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? If you're in, and you can actually help others that are around you get to their healing places mm -hmm. too you know and i've really gotten to that place in that journey in my in my healing journey well i realized certain things were triggers for me that's why i would get so mad or angry about certain situations because it looked like something i've been through mm -hmm. and it and you one thing about me that i'm noticing since I've been clearing my throat chakra mm -hmm. and how I notice everybody always want to tell me how to communicate. Okay. And I'm bold enough now. 
I don't care if you're a manager. I don't care if you a co-worker. I don't care who okay. you are. Um, elderly, whatever. I'm bold enough now and brave enough now to look you dead in your face and tell you, don't tell me how to communicate. Okay. Just yes. listen to what I'm okay. saying because I speak. In, I don't speak indirect. One thing about me, I'm a very direct. Yeah, huh. You know, uh -huh. I don't beat around the bush. Uh -huh. I say it like I mean it, and it is what it is. I let the chips fall where they may. Uh -huh. I do have tact. However, I know what I'm saying. If you listen to me, you will hear what I'm saying. Yes. Don't tell me you should have said it like this. So if you can tell me what I should have said it like, that means that you heard what the hell I said. Facts. So don't tell me how to say it. Just listen to what I'm saying and act the uh -huh. And that's where I'm getting because I'm noticing since I'm at a place where I'm healed and whole. Mm -hmm. I'm noticing that people have an issue with the fact that you healed and whole and want to make you the issue and say you the problem. Facts. And no, I'm not the problem. I'm telling you what my problem mm -hmm. is. You can act accordingly or we don't have to deal with one uh -huh. another. And that's where I'm getting to because I'm not a people pleaser. I'm getting to a place where I don't give a damn how you feel about me, what you think even. I'm at a place where I'm confident in who I am. I'm glad that you stated this because this is going to basically take us to our next topic, mm -hmm. spirituality and religion. Ooh, go for it. Where we explore in consciousness. Is it okay if we go straight there? Yeah, you can go. Hey, hey. Hey. Because right now, and it's very important because this is the year that we are so happy to see that how many people are seeking Yahweh. Mm -hmm. That is the divine within and see that this year a lot of people are being conscious mm -hmm. of their spirituality. Now, I'm so glad that you basically built a segue in bringing that because right now, that is a paradigm shift of consciousness within the ethos of the universe. So these are things that, because I'm not into the zodiac and stuff like that, but please know that there is a conscious shift. And in order to survive in this shift, you have to know who you are within yourself. What do I mean by that? So, if you're in a relationship and you have not practiced self mastery, you are headed for self-destruction for yourself yeah. as well as that person that you are with. Yeah. Because right now we're dealing at a time and space uh, where we are genetically designed and geographically located mm -hmm. for such a time as this to specifically know who we are, what we can tolerate, mm -hmm. what we cannot tolerate, mm -hmm. what these triggers are. Right now, everything are uh, being exposed on what we need to do mm -hmm. for self Perfection. Mm -hmm. Now, the first thing you have to ask yourself, like when we're dealing with spirituality, we have to understand that everything is consciousness. Yeah. Now, y'all stay with me. I'm going to just take you to a little place and you have to catch us on the next broadcast where we talk about metaphysics. Yes, sir. Now, what is conscious? The first thing you want to say, oh, it's when we wake up in the morning. We're conscious of this. We're conscious of blinking our mm -hmm. eyes. We're conscious of eating and drinking. Oh, that's a small bit of it. But what makes the brain conscious within itself? Our way. Now listen, consciousness is something that science really cannot understand. Mm -hmm. They really cannot explain it. They only can explain that how the brain, the brain vibrates and how we're made up all these different fabrics and how the body thinks and how the body responds. However, what makes the brain consciousness? Mm. I'll wait. The only thing that makes us conscious is the universal intelligence. There is no other way. Because please understand that the Bible always elude to metaphysical principles such as mm. to be absent from the body means to be present from, with the Lord. Now that simply means all there is. Mm -hmm. So with that being stated, there's breath breathing to your body. Now let's even focus on breath. I'm going to focus on consciousness. So once we are designed from the fetus and we are put into earth, that level of consciousness is instilled with us. Yeah. Not the brain, not the ability to learn. The brain and learning and the human experience, we're only being reminded of what it is we already know. Yeah. Now I know that with a whole lot of people here right there. I'm going to catch up. You can only be reminded of what it is you already know or you need to experience during your human experience. If you don't know it, you don't understand it, you can't comprehend it, catch it in the next reincarnation. But you can only get 
what you were incarnated to do and what your consciousness has explored or willing to explore and allow you to have at that moment. And sometimes your consciousness and the things you have to experience to perfect your life's path or your soul's path there you go. may be autism. Mm -hmm. Or you may have Dial syndrome, a spirit of stubbornism, mm -hmm. or we may have what others identify as a mental illness. But these are things that the human experience has to experience at that moment because I don't know what it is that we may have to tackle in the next reincarnation. I know I'm over everybody here when we talk about reincarnation. Well, you know what? I'm going to say this. I'm going to break it down like this because uh -huh. I was explaining this today to someone. Um, Numo numerology mm -hmm. uh, talks about the you know you supposed to have 13 they say 13 life cycles meaning the soul and the spirit are eternal you make contracts before you come here back in the physical so whatever bloodline you born into whatever uh, whatever you decide to uh, decisions you decide to make karmically what you want to contracts you want to finish things like that all before you become conscious before you become physical you did it in another realm and Thanks. you saw into a future that you decided to say this is what I'm going to do this is what I'm going to be this is who I want a bloodline I'm going to go into because I need to fulfill certain things that I didn't Thanks. get to fulfill in a life previous so with that being said a lot of us think oh God is just up there study create billions and billions of souls maybe so However, you also think about it. Have you ever met someone? And I'm going to deal with, because everybody know everybody is getting into twin flame, soulmates, karmic partners. Everybody is getting into this. So I'll break it down like that. Have you ever met somebody? It may not think, may not be that you want to be with them. Those are facts. I know what you're going. You, you I know get what, what I'm saying? It may not be you want to be with them, but it's something in you. Your baby, prime example, Bible talked about it. When Elizabeth and Mary met, they Fast babies leaped for joy because it was something that they made a contract with God before they got here. They had already and they knew were, each other, and they already knew each other. Even mm -hmm. the babies that was in their bellies knew who they were <laughs> and what bloodline uh -huh. they were in to fulfill what it is Those are they have to fulfill. So sometimes you will meet a person, and some in your body be like, "Ooh, I feel like I know, know you already." You already. But you cannot explain you but can't your explain, soul but tell your you. Soul, no. Don't let them treat that person like this. Everybody else call them crazy, but it's something about this crazy person yeah. that draws me to them. That's because some time ago, you and that person probably was brothers, sisters, close, lovers, married. We don't know. But whenever you have those moments, please always remember the soul knows things that the mind cannot perceive or provide the intellectuality to follow or comprehend. So therefore, the soul will tell you is something about this person that just makes me overwhelmed, give me goosebumps. And it's not always people that you want to be in a relationship with or it's none of that. It's just that your soul knows no. we crossed paths before. And some of you have had experiences where you will meet a person and instantly you don't like them. It's something about them you Speak just on it. don't Speak like. On it. You ain't never met them. You don't know nothing about them. You Speak just know, it. I don't want you in my atmosphere. I don't want you around me. I've had people like this uh -huh. now, but the sweetness and the niceness of my crazy ass kept them around me. I when know. it was a time, I'm telling you, this uh -huh. was before maturity hit me. Uh -huh. And I realized, even as a teenager, Something about you, I don't quite so like, like, and I'm trying to force this thing, but I shouldn't be not realizing you a karmic partner. You're a you karmic somebody partner. who probably killed my yes. ex in my previous life, yes. and here I am, all yes. the rash, trying to get to know you again. Yes. And I have realized that I go with my gut. When my gut feels something, y'all don't understand, my stomach get to churn, I all feel a nasty effects. taste in my yes. mouth. I don't have you around me because I realized that you was the mofo that did something to me oh, before yeah. and I just don't remember because of course we don't and that's a good thing we don't take those uh, past things into this now Carmen because you need it you need to learn something new on this journey out of new set of eyes now let me bring you back there now those are facts that sometimes 
But be cautious how you handle yes, those negative energies. Lord. Because sometimes you're across path to provide healing or for this present. So, oh yes, sometimes you can have an enemy or somebody you know you don't like, but you can cross that path, stay your distance and watch closely. Watch, fight and pray. But sometimes with this human experience, you may have to forgive that person yes. at that moment yes. in order to heal. And God will forgive or allow that same person who did you wrong in another experience to bless you in this experience. Yes. And that's the way that they call yes. it is release yes. from them. And you don't owe them nothing in your nothing. no soul contract, nothing. You don't owe them anything else in your in your phone. You know what I'm saying? Um I was doing it the other day and I was talking to a few people and they was like, yeah, somebody told me about that before, but how do I do it? And I showed them how to get their number. So it would be equivalent to me being here eight lives before. They say I got 13, according to the number, you got 13. So they say I've been here eight times before. Mm -hmm. So anytime you meet a person, you be like, ooh, they are old soul. Uh, you get old a old soul, yes. Yeah, I'd be like, this baby be here before. <laughs> This baby been here before. This baby know you already. I'm trying to tell uh -huh. you. I got a young lady I work with. And she got such an old soul. And I said, baby, you have been here before, before. She was like, you know what? You be tell I've been, I was listening to you talk to a young lady about this. She said, can you do it on me? She had been here 10 lives before. Uh-huh. You see what I'm saying? So you never know. You know what? And she just, she said, ever since I was a kid, I always would fix things that was out of order. Like if I seen a kid without they... Um, shoe tie. I uh -huh. tell them, baby, put your foot up here like they did, yeah. and I ain't no kid. Yeah. Put your foot up here, let me tie your shoe. Because it was something about, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. I gotta fix it. I see the problem, let me fix it. And I, and, and, and just so y'all know, I realized too, when I'm doing, and, and I know a lot of y'all are not into zodiacs, and I understand that, but we're in the age of Aquarius. Even the Bible speaks on it, and I'll give you scripture to back up Ooh, what I'm speaking. saying. Okay, so with that being said, this is an age, age of Aquarius is normally an age of consciousness, an age of where people want to learn about things like metaphysics, okay. want to learn about things of spirituality, even Jesus himself spoke on this level of consciousness, mm -hmm. or the age of the Aquarius, this level of consciousness would hit a particular group of those of us, which is millennials and generation X mostly, we are those ones, if you notice, even when we were children, we were okay. in tune to certain things okay. that our parents just didn't, you know, quite tap grasp into a or tap yes. grasp. And my mother used to say it all the time. Y'all generation is going to be different. Y'all going to be the ones that bring us up higher. Yeah. That's the same thing God himself said, Jesus himself, when he was speaking to his disciples. All 12, which is representation of all 12 houses. I used to didn't be into zodiac signs either. But when I began to see it unfold in front of me, I uh -huh. had to be like, oh, wait now. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's something to this. You have to realize, too, that people are becoming more conscious of the femininity of our God. Okay. Too. And that's why such a tap out where they don't you notice and, it, and notice that the chosen of 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 the tribes, okay. twelve tribes, twelve this, twelve that, mm -hmm. is a house of it means order and governmental rule. First of all, twelve house of governmental order and rule. So everything now is getting to a place where people are realizing the that it's time for order and government to rule and notice that it will be in the world it's talking about in revelations uh -huh. that in the world it will be the most chaos when his chosen people are raised in conscious notice we got covid we got people the wars we got rumors of mm -hmm. war there's all types of things going on now but they distracting us with uh, different strands yes. of this virus uh -huh. and that we're not paying attention to what's going on worldwide I want us to get to a place where we don't pervert it. It's glad that you stated that because when we're dealing with our spirituality, it's very, very, you have to be cautious. Now, now we have to be clear so everyone can understand what we don't we're saying. Make certain things. When we're saying perversion, yeah. being perverted or perversion. Now, I'm going to say this and I'm about to make a lot of people mad. So let me Ooh, go ahead and sit, let me quench sit, my please. thirst. Mm. 
Because I just went into bitch mode, okay? <laughs> I just went into bitch mode, honey. Now I just tapped into the feminine. Tap, tap I just tapped tap into tap my in. feminine side. Tap and it's time for me to go in for everybody that's right there. Yeah. So what do they mean being perverted? Ooh, so glad. Mm -hmm. We now have these Christian cults. Now this is nothing new. <laughs> but I need to address it because Talk right about. now, it's coming worse. People don't no longer even pay attention to what the Bible says. They don't. They be posting. My pastor say. They do. They do. My pastor said. They do. But what did God say to line up with what your pastor said? They do. They do. I also notice a lot of these people going to these churches where the pastor read a scripture and, and then he start talking about people, talking about stuff, talking about how people don't come to church, talking mm -hmm. about how they trifling, mm -hmm. talking about you ain't going to get no new car and that's why God ain't going to bless you. Let me tell you something first. Let me stop right there. God ran on the just as well as the unjust. But let me talk about the cultism in the church Teacher. house and the Christians. Teacher. So now you have the Catholics mm -hmm. who basically been doing what they call witchcraft for years. Yeah. Such as candle burning, mm -hmm. praying to the saints, which are the ancestral spirits. Uh -huh. But see, when we talk about as the African Americans, we are taught your original language, your original spirituality, mm -hmm. such as voodoo or voodoo, that people on. taught us to think that it's evil when it's really not. Come on. When it came here to the States, it was used for protection, and then the white man said, ooh, kill her, kill them. And then when it became perverted, it's when your white people, the European race, started trying to learn it from the African ancestry, and mm -hmm. that's when it became perverted. Let yeah. me drink on that. Drink on that. Drink on that. Perversion. Now, and then they say, oh, a lot of these people using these crystals and they using all this stuff. Baby, let me tell you something. Crystals are in the Bible. Yeah. Every king, every priest, they have them. Now, because you're not aware of them, I hate to let you know that, for example, a clear quartz was used in the traditional radios, in the making of the radios. Yeah. Because that clear quartz is what sent the signals around the universe into the headquarters of the radio stations, the TV stations. So what make you think when you wear a crystal, you cannot tap into your higher self mm -hmm. in order to speak to your higher God or the higher being of intelligence to lead you and guide you and help you? I promise you the frequencies are something that you mm -hmm. cannot understand. But the problem is you can't understand because somebody told you, which is biblical, that is witchcraft. Because people who don't understand anything they don't understand, they call it witchcraft. But okay, can I, can I, I ooh, 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 Please come in. Please come in. I'm glad you did. Please. Let's be clear. Everything on, first of all, earth itself has a vibrational pool. Facts. Why do you think that the earth turns and spins on an axis or axis or whatever they call it? Uh, goes around the sun. It is uh, it's by, by science it, it, it pulls towards this magnetic, magnetic pool. pool. Uh -huh. Because we have something in us that in it, the earth has something within itself that has that magnet. So you, why don't you think that things like copper facts, things like crystals uh -huh, facts. are not pulling from where it is being, it's being grown in the earth where there is electricity going through the earth uh -huh. itself. Not artificial electricity, but actual electrical currents. Fact. These things, you can look it up. Sound waves for uh, billions and millions of years and light years away that we are able to pick up on because of different copper or uh, crystals that they use within different devices. Uh-huh. Like he was speaking on with the radio. Let me take you further. You are a, 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 a magnetic sound wave field yourself. Oh, those are facts. You're water, right? Most of your, every, the sound waves hold best in water. Mm -hmm. Most times when you watch things like uh, Stargate and okay. stuff like that, you notice that when those gates open, the first thing you see, it looks like it's water pulling out and pushing back in. Once they walk through it, everything around it looks like it's water because water is a great conduit. It holds energy well. 
You, that's why I always speak on speaking life over uh -huh. yourself and stay like he was speaking on the last episode where he say don't get too low in yourself, but it's always, you know, stay high. When you listen to music, I don't know about y'all, but when you listen to music, especially if you're at a down state, listen to the right kind of music. It'll bring you up. It'll bring you up because mm -hmm. vibrationally you are energy. You are electrical field. You should have copper. You should have crystals in your home to help you do some of the things you do. Why do you think? Oh, Lord Jesus. I can't go there. I'm about to tell you why. Holy Ghost told me to be quiet. Uh -huh. Okay. I'm going to be quiet right uh -huh. now. Go ahead. When the student <laughs> is ready, the teacher will appear. Now, before we leave this subject, we, we have to also talk to about lady. because I feel led to this. Led. I just got a quickening in my spirit that we can't let led. this go right now. Led. This is in your First thing, so take the time. I, we got to go take here. Your time, we got man. to go, go here. Down. A lot of people, I know this was a part of the segue. No, no, no. Go for it. Go for it. But a lot of people are actually leaving Christianity. Oh, yes. Because they feel that a lot of our questions are not answered in the Bible. Yes. And a lot of people are turning back to the Africans' ancestral yes. spirit realms. Yes. No. I can't answer it. I will tell you this. I just ordered a book. Mm. On the um, African spiritual system. Okay. Because one thing about me, I can't call myself spiritual. And not know different And diaspora. not know it, then that's. Mm -hmm. You cannot be spiritual unless yeah. you study spirituality and the and philosophy of it. So, with that being mm -hmm. said, I will be studying the Ogons. Okay, come on, somebody. Uh -huh. I am going to do it. I'm also going to be learning how to channel these spirits. Yeah. Not because that's just who I am. I am a spiritual being having a human experience. Yes. I am spiritual. I don't Period. take that away. Um, a lot of people are now using the term spiritual instead of religious. Yes. What that mean? Because see, religious have taught us, oh, you can't do this. Oh, yeah. you can't do that. Yeah. You can't dress like this. You can't act like this. Like, I mean, just all this kind of stuff. And I thank God for religious uh, religiosity. Why? Because it basically teaches us from love and it teach a yeah. lot of us from going postal. Yeah. But you got to understand that. You have to understand and separate the, the difference between religion and spirituality. Yes. Okay? God that says that uh, he, he wanted people that are... Uh, he wants you to talk to him in spirit and in truth. Yes. You can't talk to him from a religious point of view. Yes. You have to talk to him. And the truth is, he is spirit That's and right. you are too. That's the truth right there. Now, I'm going to leave you there. I'm going to say this and I'm going to leave you here. We forget that God himself created his own arch nemesis or our own arch nemesis, which is Satan. That means he understands his what, what spiritual people call shadow self. Uh huh. He understands the shadow part of himself, what he was able to create that went wrong for us as mankind. He also understands himself in such a way where he even became flesh through Yahshua, which mm -hmm. is Jesus. He understands himself in such a frequency where he left a part of himself, which is the divine feminine. Uh, which is Holy Spirit with us mm -hmm. and he understands himself in such that way where he made it so that we're able to understand those parts of him. Why is it that you are afraid of who you are at your angriest, who you are at your darkest, and who you are at your worst? I have been allowing myself to feel every emotion okay. so that I can understand who I am, what spirituality called shadow self mm -hmm. what I understand I am because I, I, I already understand this when I chose to come back here I just chose to leave my ancestral family to be a part of this life now mm -hmm. okay and so with that being said I believe that this especially for the black community the Latino community the Native Americans I'm saying this to you because you are a part of the tribes of Yahweh so he is expecting for you to get the full experience of you, whether good or bad. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to leave it at that. Let's go on to Brandon and Mark. Right. Okay. All right, y'all. I want to talk about the importance of self-awareness. Okay. That's why I have a great segue. Mm -hmm. Now that, now this case with Ju uh, Justice Smollett. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> Juicy. 
is uh Paige Mills like, has a lot of people watching. However, I'm noticing that it seemed like they preyed upon him. What can you do to be aware of your brand and that it can keep people from messing with you? You know, I was to talk about our brain and, and I was talk about baby. I'm sorry, honey, because I just listen. Yes, yes. Just kick in, honey. So before we talk about. Y'all want to give Miss Trey that gym her own cocktail line? Listen, just let me know. Oh my God, honey. <laughs> listen, I was fine. I was minding my own business. <laughs> but we get to talk about branding and marketing and what we need to do to keep ourselves from being in that number. Yeah. The first thing we got to do is talk about that cancer culture. <laughs> Let me talk about you bitches. <laughs> Get on it, I snapped into my Get on it, Ray. You goddamn dirty, low life, miserable, spanky, cat and mouth, cow belly. You goddamn nasty, turtle nose looking bitch. I you goddamn trifling bastard. You goddamn peanut butter face, cranberry <laughs> smash. No brushing your teeth, goddamn earwax dripping out your goddamn nose because you're so goddamn nasty. I ain't changed your throat. I'm so sick of you goddamn cancer culture motherfuckers who miserable, ain't got shit going for yourself. Always calling, always writing letters, always publicizing somebody else wrong. Like your big, dirty, slimy ass don't do shit wrong. You big, nasty, dirty dick, stinky pussy hoe. You do shit wrong too. And it's always us black people bringing our own people down. I'm sick and tired of you. For example. He is you. <laughs> for example, I am sick and tired when the white folks do stuff like grabbing women by the pussy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And these other people, they sit up here molesting people and raping people and giving people AIDS. And you know what they do? Boys being boys. That's what yes. they say. Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, just give them Pass, he just yes. being a man. Yeah. But soon your own people come down, you wanna murder them. Come on now. With your words, with your Facebook and iconic posts on Twitter, with your let me drink. <laughs> and sip. Now read. With your <laughs> nasty self, like you so good. Baby, who made you so holy and righteous and higher than thou? Baby. Who made you higher than the angels? With your ugly, stinking, non-educated, can't read chapter one of a book within in two hours because you're illiterate and nice. you know everything and you got everything going on while you sit up here worried about somebody else's house and your husband ain't even coming home. In fact, you don't even know where your children are. In fact, you don't even check your children's homework. I'm sick and tired of you cancer culture people trying to mess somebody else's brand up because you're miserable. You always want to sit up here and mess with somebody else's market because they try to make themselves and their community better. But you want to sit up here and come up with all of your hellish ways. I'm sick of you cancer culture bitches. <laughs> you better read. You better read for film and drink. <laughs> now you know what? I'm gonna say this though. On the council culture too. I do think that certain things with council culture do go too damn far. That is true. I do think that. However, I can say two cultures that 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 has connected to this council culture thing that finally got a little voice when they get together. They call it Black Twitter and the LBGTQ Element OP community. We ain't playing with these folks. We starting to jump on bad wagons, which is which 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 I'm gonna say this though with the LBGTQ Element OP with us. Some of us we are getting to a point where. We're tired of people saying certain things, but we have to not be so closed minded that we can't hear the message in the madness. Prime example with David Chappelle. Dave Chappelle feel his way he feel about the LBGTQ community, but I listened to the actual um, recording. recording and I didn't hear shit wrong. Nothing was wrong with what he That said. man was mourning his friend that was a transgender woman. And even though he doesn't agree with it, he still loved her. You understand what I'm saying? Loved her enough to call her by her pronoun. 
pronouns even though he don't agree with it. Mm -hmm. Loved her enough to say you was one of the best, you a woman, but you the best woman of a man that I've met. You know the joke? Gotcha. You understand what I'm saying? Gotcha. Uh, created a foundation for this, uh, for this woman's child. Uh, so that when they, you get what I'm saying, uh -huh. get of age, they'll be okay in life because of the impact that one of us had on him. The council culture, you motherfuckers is going too far. That read was all good. You're going too far because, first of all, listen to the fucking message. He was basically letting us know it's a lot of shit he really didn't agree with. I didn't hear the women's right community jumping to the saying anything. Because he said even that. Mm -hmm. He said, I'd be one of the best feminist, feminists there is. Y'all motherfuckers ain't operating right. Y'all mm -hmm. sitting up here doing sit-outs and parades. Uh -huh. We can hit them where it hurt. The pocketbook. Yeah. Yeah. You understand what uh -huh. I'm saying? So he began to make sense of a lot of issues that are happening. The Me Too movement. He spoke on that. Uh -huh. He spoke on the Black Lives Matter. Uh -huh. He spoke on a lot of things. I didn't hear these communities jumping. But we so quick to not listen uh -huh. to what the message is that we forget just because we hear he said something in the past. Man, fuck that. People change every day. Every day. Y'all done said, let's be clear, some of y'all who wasn't fully aware of who the fuck you was when you was in closets and shit. Y'all said a lot of shit too. Especially because of religion. Let me real now. You was out here bad mouthing, talking shit and come to find out you like you, you like you a love some, some too. You feel me? Preachers preaching against shit coming out as gay all the time. All the time. You know, so my thing is you, you go, it's like this. The world even changes every four years. Why the fuck you think we say that again? We get presidents and things I'm, new and all this I'm shit. I'm glad you said that. And we got to stop holding people accountable. Say it. For example, Jesse Smollett, he learned his lesson. Period. R. Kelly, I hate to say it, the bitch probably ain't learned his lesson, but eventually he will. Yeah. But I'm not finna bad mouth that man anymore. God That's damn it. it. Justice is served. And let me go back to this motherfucking Me Too movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit because it. a lot of y'all falsified this Me Too. Mm -hmm. No, bitch. You had a goddamn baby by some motherfucking body you no longer like. <laughs> that ain't considered a Me Too movement, bitch. You got mad and said it's Me Too because he didn't want your ass no more. There you go. There you go. Oh no, your mama found out about it, your friends found out about it, and you was embarrassed. And now you're gonna say, oh, the real thing that happened, it was a me too moment. Yeah. I didn't really know. I didn't really, bitch, all these motherfucking people. I'm not, I'm not saying people don't rape people. I'm not. Whoop. Okay. But bitch, a lot of you got them me too people, you're a motherfucking lie. Yes. You're a lie, bitch. You're a lie. Yes. 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 Even with the Bill Cosby case, a lot of them bitches came out talking about. Um, some of them was saying that, like, what was one of them allegedly Janice Dickerson, that bitch, she said, I ain't going to say I didn't want it. I ain't going to say I didn't want to be with one of the Listen, biggest stars at that time. All of y'all came up at that time. He drugged us up. No, bitch, you was a crackhead and yeah. you need free drugs. Yeah. You had the opportunity yeah. to get a black man who yeah. had a couple of coins. Yeah. Bitch, you said, oh, free beer, free crack, free coke. Yeah. Yes! And all of a sudden, years later. Oh, me too. Bill Cosby's a monster. Yes. And you thought when you first registered your name, you was gonna get five, six million thousand dollars and he was just gonna yeah. just disappear. Yeah. Yeah. Oh bitch, that man said I'm gonna show your ass. Yeah. Bitch, I paid you. Yes, I gave you crack. Yes, but you was my whore, you was my pimp, you was my druggie, bitch. You was my scientific experiment. Bitch, I paid for your body by inducing your body and your brain with some yeah. drugs. Is it right? Yeah. No. no. However, you knew what you were doing. Bitch, you was down for the cause when it happened. You knew what you was doing. That's why I tell people all the time when they be talking about domestic violence and shit like that. And I know people who literally women, I'm talking about you. You will go oops upside a motherfucking head and then when he finally get tired and go oops back upside your head, bitch, you just lost that round that mm -hmm. time. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not condoning domestic violence, but understand where I'm coming from. Keep your motherfucking hands to yourself. If you don't want no motherfucking body going oops upside your head too, you got to be a willing participant mm -hmm. <laughs> of the fight going wrong. I'm just saying. I'm, and I speak on that because like he said, 
it's a lot of them motherfuckers that was willing participants. Oh yeah. It was willing percent. And then too, you gotta get to a place of you so far understanding who the fuck you are and your brand and where you're going. Most of them were actors and actresses who weren't getting to play in Hollywood that they were. Oh yeah. Let's just keep this shit 100. Oh, yeah. And you went and thought you was going to give him a little pussy. Didn't know he like knocked out pussy. Okay. Come on. Talk okay. about you it. You can't be aware. <laughs> he like knocked out. He got to be unconscious. He be unconscious. You can't remember nothing that happened. He no motherfucking self-aware pussy where you all aware of what you're which, now that I think about it, how the hell could you testify something that happened and you don't remember? You were knocked the fuck out. I'm done. That's a story for you. You walked day. your ass up in there knowing that you was about to get, get a little fucking going on. Come on now. You come, and another one that, that just didn't quite sit right in my soul was when Russell Simmons allegedly was um, uh, talked about a young lady that he, he 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 admitted he had sex with the young lady. Okay. He admitted it. He said, well, wait, she was a willing participant. She came to my house at 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. Okay. Bitch, ain't nothing like my mama and grandma and them used to say. Ain't nothing open but legs and ain't nothing up but prayer, intercessors and hoes. Which one are you? A uh hoe. -huh. Period. Bitch, you knew you coming to a man house at 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. You was going to bust it open and spread it wide. Oh, and that's my problem that I have, too. Because they want to label women as the weaker sex all the time. That we don't have this. We think out of ourselves out of any motherfucking jam. I don't know about nobody else. But I can think myself out of any motherfucking uh -huh. jam. So if I come there at 12, 1 o'clock in the morning, I know I'm coming to bust it open. Mm -hmm. I ain't coming out to play no motherfucking games. That's Mr. Russell Simmons. He don't need me to come to his house and have no conversation with him. Somebody was going to have a conversation. Bitch, Girl, you don't you need no advice from you. You could have sent him an email, whore. You knew what you was doing, honey. You want the tricks, the other tricks, the honey, and you got it. And you Again, can. she thought she was going to get some coins. She said, if you don't give me the money, I'm going to say I'm going to go pub. Me too. Bitch, you two, and then Listen. this was what? This happened in 2017. But the shit, when it came out in 2017, what fucked me up that nobody noticed. This shit was happening, it happened to her in 2008. Now, wait a minute. Bitch, it took you, now I understand certain victims, it do take you a while to come clean. However, you still was around this man. This is what fucks she me up. She ain't got to come clean because she already come. Thank she went you, over there and Girl, you knew what you was watching. Girl, you was wet. <laughs> Stop it. That's what trips me out about her. You motherfuckers still want to, and then one of them say, well, he promised me a, a, a episode on the Bill Cosby show and never uh, came through on me. So, bitch, you, in other words, you saying, you telling the truth to us and we ain't listening. Mm -hmm. You went to go fuck. You got mad that he knocked you out because you can't, now you can't tell your friend uh -huh. you good or bad bitch because you knocked your you ass out. Right See? What's it cut or uncut? <laughs> you don't know shit. And you mad that he didn't give you a roll on that bitch. Shouldn't you be mad he took your pussy? I'm confused. He probably ain't do nothing but just take pictures. Honey, I don't even think he went up in there, honey. It was stinking and he had blonde hairs on top of it. I don't think he did none of that. Ain't nobody still here messing with no, he, he, he actually fucked up when he did the comedy show and he said, I fucked him, but. <laughs> oh, I missed that part. <laughs> he actually said, I slept with him, but. He did a uh, OJ Simpson. He told on his motherfucking self, in other words. <laughs> Do you hear me now? But yeah, you gotta just, I think too, with Jussie Smollett, because I think he got, he guilty with five or six counts. I just think that it's just too fucking much to me. I mean, he yes, he did break the law, made a mistake, blase, blase, but motherfuckers, y'all was doing worse than that. Let me tell you what he should do, honey. Just go into porn. Just start doing porn live and porn a little bit. <laughs> I think that'll be your best option, honey, because I can't see. I'm not saying it won't never happen, but baby, you got to wait a little minute, honey. These people ain't finna give you no key roles no time soon, honey. You might as well start doing live Broadway plays, baby, because you shot for a little minute. You just need to be quiet. 
We don't need to hear about you to, about you to the next for the next three to five years. Do you some low key stuff, honey? Make you some coins, honey, and then come out and everybody don't forget what happened. Yeah, they always do the next big thing. Matter of fact, you ain't even gonna have to wait that long because the next big thing is happening right before now. Oh yeah, now. they they gonna forget. They gonna forget about it. And like you said, make your own motherfucking lane. It's too much you got make there. Your own open lane. streaming going on. We in the best stage of our yeah. lives. Let's just be clear. Some of y'all need to understand that. <laughs> That's a great education segue too. That is a we in one of the best stages of our goddamn yeah. lives right now. Yeah. We in an information stage. You can make money doing any motherfucking thing. Right now we are in an era where there are no excuses. None. You cannot make any excuses about any trajectory, any area of your life, any experience, anything you want to learn, anything you don't know, anything you're confused about, anything you're ignorant about. It is no reason. Now you don't even have to ask people stuff. All you got to do is say, hey Google, hey Alexa, That's and you it. tell them what you want. I mean, it's no excuse. Listen, let me tell you something. A lot of people eager and dumb as dumb as hell. I'm so glad we're going to this education segment because it's going to lead us in there. Because you just want to be dumb. Yeah, you want to be. You want to be. You want to be. I also noticed during this year, and I want to commend the teaching community. You all are some phenomenal, phenomenal Average. teachers. Average. I have noticed how during the pandemic you had to keep people's eyes focus on a computer screen yeah why y'all was teaching and it ain't easy with a lot of our children going through, uh -huh. going through some of the mental challenges that they've been going through y'all keep their attention y'all teaching y'all doing the damn thing i noticed that that was one of the greatest uh breakthroughs as an educator though what are some of the things that you had to adjust to to this new way of norm? There are multiple things we had to adjust to. Number one, as we stated earlier, no excuses. Well, they've been out of school for a long time. That's why they behave. That's why they fight. No excuse, baby. Let me tell you something. You fight because you like to fight because you wasn't trained at home. There you go. So we have a lot of people coming after this pandemic, come back to school. We have more kids fighting than anything. Let me tell you something. You're getting all that negative energy from your house. Period. Okay. You said mom and dad was clutched up in the house all day. Mm -hmm. While dad sit up here spinning up all the link cards, sit up here buying flaming hot honey <laughs> and a steak honey with no vegetables and no fruits. And then you simply try to wonder why your child can't think and can't talk. Come on now. Because you sit up here feeding them anything. But listen, one of the things I've noticed that a lot of parents was exposed for their child not knowing. Yeah. We still have kids in sixth grade who do not know how to properly and hire all the way through high school that do not know how to properly write their own name. And for this situation, it is a very, very sad and embarrassing experience that your child do not even know the number. I ask people all the time, what's the number to 911? They be like, <laughs> and they be serious. Yeah, they do. Children don't know the address anymore, and I'm talking about middle schools. They don't know the number to 911. You can literally ask them, what's the number to 911? Yeah. I don't know, what is that? They don't know anything. And a lot of stuff they're basically parents are blaming on what they should learn at school. A lot of stuff you should teach your kids at home. Yeah. I still see kids in high school that don't know how to tie their shoes. They take their shoes and just tuck them inside. They don't know how to tie their shoes. They just don't have the brain capacity. And I know you want to call it the brain capacity. They just don't have nobody at home that is willing enough yeah. to take out the time to teach their children how to read. Yeah. Now, we have a lot of kids not reading at grade level. And that's one thing that I read at grade level. But you can't recognize certain words like and, butter, nor, for, yet, so, he, Come on. she, went, dog, cat, fish, bird. You have a problem. A straight problem. And you sitting up here with one of those parents who buying your kids all this stuff. And you ain't told them you love them because you love them. You're hey. simple. Learn! Period. Learn yourself some. Now, but the other thing is to catch 22. Because you got to realize that a lot of teachers are also experiencing when they take off, they can't get subs. Yeah. Because subs don't want to go around people. Because we got a lot of kids who just don't want to wear their masks. Yeah. And the truth of the matter is, all you can do is encourage them. You can't be like, you get suspended, you go home for three days. You really can't do that. At least why I am. We can't just be like, we can encourage them, blah, blah, blah. 
but there are a lot of kids like it's hot they'll take their nose down and move the mask completely so there are several risks that teachers have to take that a lot of people are not paying mm -hmm. experience to mm -hmm. and then especially when you live with your own family and we have a lot of people particularly quarantining all the way across America with these school issues because COVID although this is a silent wonder but COVID is really 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 ramping out throughout mm -hmm. our communities and our homes through the schools now most of our kids who have it might get a runny nose, mm. may not be nothing important or no, nothing big, but they go home and they give it to big mama, or they go yeah. home and give it to little yeah. mama, or they go ahead to give it to all uh, auntie who been obese her whole life mm. and she don't like to do nothing but just sit and watch TV and eat and make excuses and fuss at everybody out there. But listen, she's the one who's getting COVID and dying. That's it. So with that being stated, I, I do understand that I believe that literally it's been like 5,000 plus a week in Chicago. Yeah. Well, not Chicago, but Cook County mm -hmm. that's actually being diagnosed with the virus every seven days that I read statistics. Oh, wow. And I'm saying to myself, like, yes. And But the good thing else is less than 10% of the people that are not surviving. Now, one thing about it, I believe that life and death is in the power of the tongue. And I believe there's certain things that we do attract. Oh God, what do you mean by that as an educator that we do a track? Sometimes we literally think these things. I, what if I get it and I die? What if I get it and I die? I never say, what if I get it and I die? Mm -hmm. I always say, what if I get it because I'm going to survive. Yes. If I get it, I'm going to live. If I get it, my immune system is strong. I have the antibody to fight it. But we teachers, back to the beginning of education, it's a lot that we have to deal with coming in the door. Yeah. The first thing we have to deal with is masks. So a lot of our kids, you give them a mask and they take them, they throw them on the ground, they ball them up, but they want another one. So it's also a mask shortage. Ooh. Mm. I can't talk about too much. Mm. The schools are also responsible for their own budget that the school itself has to purchase the hand sanitizer and the wipes. If you don't believe that that's knocking the budget out the way, then when our students should have technology, our schools should have up-to-date books and equipment and learning technology and STEM products so that we can do what we need to do. But the problem is we have to take that money that we should be using on educational resources to buy masks, yeah. to buy hand sanitation and wipes and things like that to keep our schools safe. And it's really, 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 really hard. And a lot of people don't want to talk about that. But it's very important that we understand that the small things that a lot of people are not talking about that are at risk yeah. as far as being an educator. The other thing is they're basically preparing everybody for online learning. A lot of people still do not have internet. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of kids that really could not handle the online learning because in order to do everything, the first thing you have to do is be able to read. So if you cannot read at grade level, you cannot read, okay, you have to press this to go here to get into this class. You need this class, you need to go to this link at that time. You can't reach, you can't go. We had some of the oh, most wow. academic, academic failures of all times with this online mm -hmm. learning experience. Mm -hmm. And truth be told, we may have to go into it. But if we go back into it, there's not many schools that purchase new computers. So a lot of the computer devices are broken. So let's say we had a pandemic and we couldn't go to school next week. Mm -hmm. Do you not know how many people that would not be able to learn because their parents are buying them new shoes and new this and new that. And now one parent thought about, you know what? I need to get my kid a computer to learn on. Wow. They worry about, oh, the PlayStation, I can't find them. Just not worry about a PlayStation, get all five of your kids to dog on Chromebook. That's it. hundred dollars a piece. That's but you it. worry about majors and minors and minoring and majors. Listen, it's too much stupid stuff that we have our focus on as educators and parents of kids who are in education. Wow. Let's go into, that's good. Mm-hmm. Yo, that's real stuff right there. Because I just did a, um, and I'm bringing back that Jim Corner. I'm going to be talking about uh, teaching uh, and learning financial literacy within the black and brown community. Because I noticed as I've been teaching during the pandemic these classes, I'm noticing that people are building more anxiety about money like never before. And they becoming where they're uh, they're building up anxiety with their creditors. They don't want to talk to them, things like that. Not knowing if you get your tail on the phone and talk to them, they can come up with a solution 
that'll help you defer uh -huh. your debt. Uh -huh. And we're getting further in debt and the credit is messed up, things like that. So that's so true. I think that, like you said, we need to start focusing on things like that. Because do you realize that computer got a camera on it? Uh -huh. That baby can review whatever he watching, whatever game he playing, and get a check. Y'all don't, and I was telling them that a lot of them were in the class like, wow, my daughter asked mm -hmm. me about doing this. Kids even want to do this type okay. of stuff where they realize they can make money from certain things that, they're, that are their hobbies. So if they're not making money from it or figuring out a way to, you know what I'm saying, why are y'all buying it? It don't make sense. If they're a gamer, they need to be reviewing the best game I out believe. there. You know what I'm saying? These people is getting paid. Do you realize that? It's blue. These little babies is millionaires on YouTube and Facebook and can on. Uh, because they make, they you know, they're making an avenue. Like I say, there's no reason why nobody should be broke. Let's go right into building wealth. Uh -huh. Okay? There was an increase in entrepreneurship. Women have been, women have been high in those numbers. What can we do to keep this going? Uh, strategies for building wealth. Before we get too deep into that, I know I looked up the statistics okay. of black Good. ownership uh -huh. of employer businesses have increased since 2002. In 2002, there were 94,518 black owned businesses with employees. That increased to 124,000 in 2017, up to up 31.2%. The 2007 and 2012 survey of business owners, predecessors of the ABS, which is American Black Summit means, okay. also include data of businesses that not have that does not have employees. So wow. just think about it, and I'm gonna say this. The strategies of building wealth is this. Do not be afraid. Period. And I'm going to explain. I was in the class uh, Saturday. I had a mixed group of uh, both uh, children and also um, adults. Okay. And I was breaking down different things about wealth and stuff like that. And how to build certain, you know, avenues of wealth. And one of the young men in the class blew my man and blew his own mama man. Okay. He said, you absolutely right. I Google everything. Okay. This boy ain't. He got enough sense. He said, I Google everything. He said, I'm going to be a business owner one day and I'm going to create jobs. Mm hmm When it, I had him at the negotiation table and another young lady at the negotiation table. He bought time from her to okay. do a chore, okay? okay? He negotiated where he didn't have to give me any money. He gave it to the young lady. He wanted to do the chore. The young lady negotiated money out of me, which was him giving the money for chore. How many of you are paying for, you are uh, literally, are not paying people for their time. You are literally getting paid for your time. And it's not enough to survive off of. You understand mm -hmm. that? Um, I, and I and as I was talking to him, I said, you know what? People are getting to a place where they don't they don't have to be on these jobs being treated like shit. Mm -hmm. I'm saying. He read, let me read you employers. Uh-huh. You some of you motherfuckers don't realize that it's things like Uber Eats, Lyft, Airbnb, uh motherfucking YouTube, uh goddamn uh tickety tockety. Uh -huh. It's all types of Get out here where people can make money. Nobody has to take your bullshit. They don't have to take you talking to them down to them. They don't have to take none of that shit. We are not our parents where they had to take that shit. We ain't got to take that Fact. shit. As long as you got a house, a car, a fucking apartment, you can make money off Airbnb and fucking Uber. It's so and so much so where it's taking me. A, I'm making what? Making two hundred dollars a day, fucking with you for eight hours. I can go do that same. Four hours and make that same amount of uh -huh. motherfucking money where well, I ain't gotta worry about nobody talking down to me, talking crazy to me, telling me get uh, all types of shit. You motherfuckers need to get it together. And not so much the employer, it's the people you fucking hire to run your business. Uh huh. These motherfuckers is the ones that's representing you. And they full of shit. Let's be clear. Uh -huh. Some of you managers, y'all ain't shit neither. I'm talking to you. You motherfuckers need to learn how to talk to people. It's the tone for me. If your tone out of order, I'm gonna check your ass. I don't care who 
or what you are. Y'all don't get no fuck about that. You understand me? Because if I respect you, what is given is fucking required. Period. And that's all I'm going to say on that. Strategies to build the wealth is not being afraid to walk off a motherfucking job if you need to and take a leap to review your favorite fucking bottle of water. Well, I need you to understand that a lot of people are actually stepping out on faith. I mean, ridiculous I'm faith. Saying, like, I'm tired of kids and people I I'm ask. Saying, I'm tired of people talk to me like shit. They going online, getting a trade, going to learn on. from other people. And a lot of people say, I want to learn. No, bitch, you don't want to learn from nobody. You trying to suck them up and you want to take the easy way out. Let me tell you something. People want to bless you and teach you to do stuff, but you try to take this lazy way out and skip steps and you don't want to start from the bottom so you can understand that foundation. And now, like you say, this is something you stated earlier, hmm. but I don't feel that a lot of people got it. Ooh, it's no reason for nobody to be broke. No fucking reason. None. Now, a lot of people, I'm going to go back from a couple of years before everything was digital. Mm -hmm. But the DVD man and the CD man. Come on, some Those are some fucking entrepreneurs. Come on, some man. Listen, the people who were supplying everybody with their DVDs and say CDs, mm -hmm. the people behind that became millionaires. So Come a lot on, of people somebody. laughed at Come that. on, baby. But a lot of people were millionaires. Mm -hmm. Although a lot of them went to jail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some did. But a lot of them became millionaires. That's it. Now, you know, like, oh, that's just they stealing. And I get it. But people have been stealing all of their life that are millionaires. How? Oh, they learn loopholes in tax dollars. Why you have to pay yours? They figure out ways. Oh, I don't have to pay this. Then they find out ways to sneak in there. Then they, flush, they learn how to write this off on their taxes. The rich been doing it for years. Now, woo! The Bible says. Yeah. For you spiritual people, the yeah. Bible says that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Mm -hmm. Say it. Say it. The righteous can't get shit until you catch up with what the wicked people been doing Ooh. for a long time. Ooh. And the reason why you're not blessed and you're stressed is because you're sitting up here warm, moist me and still singing your favorite song. I know the Lord will make a way. Come on, come on. Listen, you got the, the way is you are the way. You are the motherfucking way. If he's he gave the way, your hands power to he gave, wealth. Listen, in your goddamn hands, you got the ability to create wealth in your mind. One little small idea. Let me tell you something. A lot of people have the ability to create art, and they be like, ain't nobody gonna like it. Let me tell you something. There is somebody who gonna buy the little sh things that you consider to be shit, ugly, and nobody likes. Come on. For other people that's laughing, oh, he's selling all. He ain't broke. He ain't motherfucker. He's selling body oils and shea butter, but he ain't, he ain't broke. broke. See, see, you got to learn how to put you, you got to learn how to change your psyche. And I tell everybody, let me tell you something else that a lot of people making money on. You have a lot of things you can do sitting, like you got a room in your house, open it up for Airbnb. Yeah, yeah. Create yeah. wealth. Yeah. How, you have rooms in your house, now you could do for, um, People with special needs, you can house them. Yep. They're now giving up to two thousand dollars a month per mm -hmm, person. Mm -hmm, huh? mm -hmm. You you can open up your home and pr provide some joy for somebody in need, such as foster care. Yeah, these are several different, and I'm not saying doing it for money, but there are several things where you can be blessed that you can do out of love. So I'm gonna say this one more time: See. there are so many avenues for you to do That's to it. where you do not have to be broke. That's it. I have a friend right now. Where she, where she basically sells like um, uh, these gift packages and stuff. Mm. And people laughed at her. But guess what? When COVID hit, <laughs> she was the only person in the area that was left with supplies. Come on, She man. took her supplies that everybody laughed at her with. And she, all of her stuff, she was able to sell triple and, and quadruple because she was the only one that had Clorox uh -huh. in her boxes. Come she on. was the only one that had peroxide and alcohol and stuff Come like on that. Now. So right now, with everybody who laughed at her, she was in position for a blessing. And speaking of that, Tiana Von Johnson, she uh, is within real estate in different businesses. And some told her two years prior to COVID, come out with a sanitizer. Everybody said, what the hell are you coming out with uh -huh. a sanitizer for? Guess what? Sold the fuck out during the COVID. Uh -huh. She was the only one with hand sanitizer. Uh -huh. Y'all better get with it. Y'all better start listening. Put your ear to the pit. Listen. With that being said, you just stated it indirectly. Basically, God giving everybody ideas. <laughs> 
and we keep saying right now it ain't gonna work. Baby, yep. let me tell you, yep. you don't know what's gonna happen to make you a millionaire overnight. That's a whole Dang. lot. Of that's one lady who everybody laughed at because she's had it came out with her little lipstick line, her mm -hmm. makeup line. Mm -hmm. Everybody that's coming out with this stuff that everybody created 50 times are still being rich. That's it. If you got a voice to talk, use it. Period. If you're a good mentor, learn how to that take us back to our come position. On, come learn on. how to brand them you're market yourself. Your like, come on! Period. Your liberty idea, all you need is the right people and the right time to bless you and put you in position to be on your and way. And I'm going to say this too. A lot of you who have walked off your jobs during COVID and shit like that and decided to start working for yourselves, some of y'all making fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 a year. You weren't even making that on a goddamn job you Fast. walked off of. Fast. Some of you are thousandaires making six figures a year and that's okay too. Some of us ain't gonna be fucking millionaires, and that might be okay. You just gotta find your niche and work that shit. Uh huh. Do work it. Work it. Work it. Who's that said one of my favorite songs? It'll work if you work it. Woo! That's one of my favorite songs. I think who was that? Damn. It sounds familiar too. Damn. What's her name? With Old school girl, but anyway, yeah, then they come to me to the work if you're working. Okay, all right, let's go into our tech. Seven oh my god, Ooh, I can't wait for this section. Now, y'all know I'm gonna let Dr. Hall do what he do, baby. Listen, let me go ahead and go straight into my take several C section. I need to talk about these goddamn COVID variants. <laughs> I don't believe this these motherfuckers. This, this, this goddamn extraterrestrial, this goddamn <laughs> recreated scientific experiences. Now listen, I understand. Oh, I know what you want to tell me, but science think that viruses replicate and they yeah, come yeah. into different things. Goddamn, this, God, this, this, this motherfucker shit on. here, there ain't no goddamn virus. Scientific yeah. still, science still haven't confirmed there was a virus. It's a goddamn science experience. Yeah, it's a goddamn yeah. science experience. My, now, did you have the regular COVID-19 variant? Did you have the Delta variant? Now you got the, how you say it, Miss Omicron? Omicron. Listen, next they're going to have one new variant. His name going to be Damien. <laughs> and one going to be Sugar. One going to be uh, Miss Perez. Listen, they run out of, they come, listen, before this goddamn variant come out, they already been had a name for that goddamn shit. Just like Barack Obama. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. He already knew. That the virus was gonna be coming. Yeah. He had already put the uh, the money to the side to yeah. help deal with it so yeah. that America would be hit the hardest. They had already knew it every 100 years. Yeah. We need to shrink the amount of people on the earth because yeah. it's overpopulating themselves. Let me tell you something. This is a universal experience. You really think the earth is gonna run out of space a lot for your food to feed these people? Period. It won't! It won't, you big dummy! It won't, you big dummy! Continue to evolve. Yes, Not done does. with this ammonia or money cry. Uh, whatever the name of the damn uh, variant is. You Listen, I need you all to understand that this virus needs to take several seats. Seven. Bitch, better than that. Don't even take a seat. Seven. Bitch, because listen, to where this virus needs to go, honey, you need to get your goddamn futon bed and turn that bitch into a bed, honey. Release the back, to turn it into a goddamn bed, honey, so it's no longer a chair. Lay your goddamn ass down, bitch. Take a put a sheet over your body, include your face, so you can stop breathing. Because we are sick of your goddamn ass. And everybody else is behind this goddamn science experiment, bitch, stop. Period. Because this Omicron, Omicron variant, they talked about this shit on The Simpsons in the 90s, and it was an alien Everybody knew. and this shit. So my thing is, whoever the time traveler is that's involved with uh, What's this Simpsons? other man's name? Bill <laughs> Gates? He also, uh, was, Bill, let me tell you who are the time traveler is with The Simpsons. That's a, we need <laughs> that's we're going to go back to what we're talking about the metaphysical. <laughs> Listen, I need y'all to understand and also allow the people who actually paid for this variant to go around, honey. I might end up missing a spanking. Yeah. But please note the charge. This is not the views of any of our <laughs> job, our professional affiliation. This is all our personal views. Please make sure you understand this part. This is our personal views. But I promise you that one of the richest people in the world sponsored this virus. His name is Bill Gates. You're Come welcome. on now. Yeah. Terrestrial ass variant. Let's just be clear. Needs to take several what seats. 
Okay, let me go into my take several. Minding the business that pays me all 2020. For those who don't get it, take several. Baby, I'm so tired of folks minding people business that don't fucking pay you. If it don't, if what they eat don't make you shit, why do you care so much? Walk out your own faith, your dumb asses with fear and trembling. Stop worrying about what people doing who got the same same tech, technological access you got to the same Bible, same Quran you read and every the damn thing else. Start minding the damn business that pay your dumb ass. I'm so sick and tired of people downgrading, belittling, acting a fool on people all because you don't understand what it is to mind the business that pay your dumb ass. If it's not bothering you. If it don't, if you eat it and you can't shit from it, then leave people to fuck alone. Take several seconds. about a couple of more seconds, because I need to understand. <laughs> Listen, this is something else that's bothering me. I'm tired of you goddamn miserable motherfuckers, single goddamn bitches, ain't got shit to Say offer. One more time. I mean, you got, you don't even want to, you're a lazy, trapped ass, or you want to go to the goddamn food pantry, and you want to talk about me and my goddamn loaf of bread, and how I got an extra loaf of bread, and how you think I'm all that. Not I think, but you, you think, think, because you're so goddamn miserable and self centered, and whoa, it's me. Yeah. You goddamn miserable, needing. We talk about your ass from the beginning. <laughs> bitch, we talk about your ass from spirituality, mental health, and wellness, bitch. We talk about your lazy, trifling ass from Brandon and Martha, bitch. We talk about your ass in education field, bitch. We talk about your trifling, broke, nonsense ass who wanna that fuck part. up every goddamn body else, bitch. That part. We talk about your ass from the moment we started because you's a goddamn lazy, miserable bitch. Trifling asshole who don't want to do shit but make everybody else motherfucking life complicated because you think that you're God's gift to man. Yeah. You just need to mind your own motherfucking business, bitch, and realize that what the problem is is you. You always point your motherfucking finger. Bitch, start pointing your whole motherfucking hand. Because if you point a finger, bitch, you got multiple pointing back at your toilet. Bitch, start pointing your goddamn hands. And when you point your hands, bitch, you're going to realize you're in the receiving position, there bitch. You go. Because you're going to receive. The first thing there for me, go. bitch, is called a read. There you go. Because I don't understand to me why you feel the need to be on my. My thing is, it's too much shit out here that you could be focusing on. Bitch, you trying to get a house. Focus on that. Okay. Bitch, you trying to get a car. Focus on that. Bitch, you trying to get a job. Focus on that. Bitch, you trying to grow your business. Focus on that. Bitch, you trying to Stop get a... focusing on business that don't fucking pay you. What you forgot about, bitch, you trying to get a relationship and then, bitch, you don't want to comb your goddamn hair, bitch. You don't want to go fix your eyebrows. Then you got a mustache worn, ho. And then you got a beard that you ain't shaved in three goddamn months, ho. That and part. then you know your goddamn hairline receding right here, bitch. And you want to your goddamn head, bitch. That but part. you want to sit up here and talk. He, that, he, all that, bitch. Did you see what he got? Did you see what she get? Mm. She I always get this. He always get that. But bitch, you don't realize the reason why I'm getting it because bitch, I put myself in position Period. to be blessed, bitch, and all you do is woe is me. I ain't got all Period. I need. Don't nobody want to help Period. me. But if you want to sit up here and talk about somebody else, bitch, I got one motherfucking closing session for your motherfucking ass. Bitch, it's simple. Let me take a deep breath. Mind your, your business. business. That pay your dumb ass. Alright, we appreciate y'all in this end of year wrap up. If it's anything you would like people to take several on, make sure to put it in the comment section. And we'll be sure to uh, read your name and let people know you need to take several our next damn segment. We're going to get into that metaphysics. Uh -huh. I, I, I feel I, I, it. That's on my soul. It's been and, and I'm telling you, it's so much on my soul. I'm the type that I, I'm, I, I'm going to teach you by nature. So I research I don't way. research them. And this is something so else we need to we say. We're break that thing down. When we speak to y'all, we're giving you facts. You I need to, we there need to go. make sure that's clear there when we clear. start from the beginning. Clear. We don't just talk about no random yeah. shit. We are already well researched and well yeah. versed. Yeah. So stay tuned for the next episode. Stay tuned, baby, because y'all gonna love it. Me and him gonna get together. Like I told him, we gonna get together and figure out what angle we coming. And what we do, baby, y'all gonna be, oh, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be really good. But thank y'all so much for tuning in to the gym spot. We appreciate you. Have a beautiful year. Don't let nothing hold you back. Nothing hold you down. Don't let anything have you stagnant. Send your word 
words any way you want them to go because your voice has no geographical location or limitation. Mm -hmm. They go wherever you send them. So it's time to start sending your words where you need them to go to shift atmosphere and open doors you never thought can be open mm -hmm. to you and sit at tables that mentioned your name even before you got there. Mm -hmm. Alright? What you got for the people for 2020? All I want to do is just say listen, I'm not going to give you one of those, you know, 2021, you got to get it done. 2022, you got to go ahead to get it through. Land, we ain't doing that goofy shit, baby. Because <laughs> everybody going to have their own path to That's fulfill it. for 2022. That's right. So what you did not finish in 2021, it's time to get it done in, in 2022. 2022. Have a wonderful, wonderful year. Have joy, love, and be empowered in the 2021 and 22. You be blessed. Mwah.